for inviting me. Uh, today we're going to talk about social media for research. But I want to do one thing first. I think it's very important. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. That's why you came here. So I've actually set up this poll everywhere. And for those of you who have anyone that has a device with internet access, you can just go to this link, p-o-l-l-e-d.com slash usm1, and type in your question that you want to learn something today. What do you want to learn today? So actually, I can tailor my, uh, or your three hours to cover some of the things that you want to know. I might not know the answer to all your questions, but at least I can direct my uh, session towards what you want to learn regarding social media. If you don't have any questions after two minutes, I will just go the normal way. So please, have you used such, I'm sure you have used such tools before, right? Try now. Yeah, anybody? Anyone with a handphone or a, uh, no digit? Then you can ask me personally also later during. The but I do hope this session is not a lecture because we have three hours. I think by we reach 15 minutes, we will get sleepy. And this is social media. Social media is two way, uh, whether it's digital or physical. So if you want to so please, I give you two minutes to ask questions or remain silent. P O L L E D dot com slash USM one. Anything that you want to learn. I'm sure if you came here you had some questions. Uh, so we can look at some of those questions straight away and then we'll go into the uh, seminar about social media for research. I'm running from my hotspot from my phone. I'm still waiting for the wireless access. So it might be, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a little slow. Let me ask a question myself. So let's see if it works. Okay, let's see, we have one question. Okay. Using uh, social media for support, supporting personal learning environment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we go ahead uh, until our internet is, uh, let me just check where the internet is. But whatever I'm going to talk about today, uh, you can find the slides on my blog. I already put the slides there. And also, if you have any device with you, as we go and explore some of these tools, there's nothing like touching the tools themselves. What comes through the air usually goes out to all the air, unless you try it out, especially with uh, social media. Yes, technology works. Okay. Okay, if you, if you just Google Zenlearn, uh, you can just click, please click on this when you go to the first link, and you scroll down, and you can see even the learning outcomes what we're trying to achieve today. And also the slides are here. So if you have to go off early, sometimes academics are very busy. Uh, you can always access the slides later. I've made the resources available here, okay? And I have actually tried to set up three social media experiments during these three hours. You might have a fourth one. If you achieve all three experiments, uh, Prof. Uh, Prof. Karim, you're going to give them anything? Let me see them. Okay. So all the resources are here. Okay, let's just look at the questions. But did there have to be more than one question? Or? We'll get back to that. Okay. Now one question only. It's okay. We will get more questions as we go along. Okay, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. How many of you actually blog today? How many of you actually blog today? How many of you actually blog about your research? I did it came up research. How many of you actually blog about your research? You got two. How do you feel about that? Is it a lonely affair or do you feel that uh, you're reaching out your ideas to the world and people are benefiting from it? How about tweets? How many are you on Twitter? Okay, we have three. There's, not, there's nothing right or wrong here, I'm just asking. Because okay? then my experiments will work very well. Huh? Okay, what about Facebook? That's a silly question. How many of you are not on Facebook? <laughs> Is there anyone? There's nothing wrong if you're not on Facebook. Are you, if you ask students that question, they get very angry. Uh, but it's actually a very good tool. There's a lot of groups and, and pages and so on Facebook that uh, I'm sure discussing some of your research areas. Same with LinkedIn. Okay, how many of you are on LinkedIn? Good. What about YouTube? Okay. What about 
USM? Are they on YouTube or not? Facebook message them, they will reply, but the opportunity is there. 
Okay. So these are some of the things that uh, empowers you in social media. Huh? Empowers you to connect, to collaborate, to interact, to share, to create, and learn. Okay. But before we go into social media, I want to discuss the challenges. What really stops us uh, from using uh, social media. And there are challenges, and, and they are not always perfect. Uh, the tools in social media are not perfect. They have a lot of potential two-edged swords. Uh. So let's just look at some examples. Uh. What about this one? Do you have this problem? I think in e-learning and whatever technology, today we have tools overload. Even if you go into Apple, how many of you use iPhone here? Okay, when you try some of the apps, you notice how many apps are on Apple? You know how many apps are on Apple? I think there's more than one million now. You know? So you need help. Uh, it's, it's tools overload. Okay. Firewall blocking. For example, if you said, if USM today says, oh, we're going to use YouTube to promote some of our research. We want to record some of our research and put on it. Firewall blocking becomes an issue in USM because in USM at the moment YouTube is blocked. So firewall blocking is an issue when you want to choose which tool that you want to use for your social media activities, especially for research. Okay. And then accessibility. Okay, and then you have usability and ease of use. How many of you find today's social media use, uh, social media tools easy to use? Are they difficult, easy to use? Yes. Very easy. Is it more easy than your uh, learning management system? So would you rather use that than the learning management system? Yes. But that's not today's topic. But <laughs> <laughs> I can't go through that. But yes, uh, so it's, it's much easier. The reason. Because these people, when they build it, their job is basically trying to attract as many people as possible to use these tools. And that's why they're just becoming more and more user friendly. Because if they don't make it user friendly, people won't use it. Okay. And then what about the sharing challenge? Say that now I have done some research, I want to share my research. Okay, I publish my papers in the journals, but I also want to share using social media. So one of the challenges with social media is information overload. I mean, when you go into the social media world, it's, it's just a lot of nonsense and also it's a lot of information and it's difficult to make sense and find what you're looking for. Content ownership. Who owns the content? If I were to post my article on a blog, who actually owns this content? You? The university? The students? Blogger? So the ownership becomes an issue. Right? And I'm, some, some universities are not comfortable with the idea that you use uh, non-university uh, tools to publish. Okay, what about confidentiality? Uh, when you go through the normal research process, you, you don't publish until everything has been peer reviewed and checked and all the rules are not been broken. But in social media, you just post it and suddenly you're breaking rules. I give an example, because um, I come from a medical university. What if students are doing research on, on patient and then suddenly take some pictures and shoot up on Facebook and say, hey, look at this patient, he doesn't look too well. Uh, this actually happens. It has happened and it happens. So that's why confidentiality is very important when you deal with social media. So you need, if you want to embrace it, you need to have certain rules and regulations. Okay, and policies. Quality. How do you know it's quality? Uh, how many of you ever cited a blog article? Has anybody here cited a blog article? Well, I don't think the journals will approve it because it's not gone through a proper quality process. So that's an issue. Right? That's one of the challenges with social media. Another one is authority. Who, who is, I mean, if I, I can say I'm Dr. Doogie on the blog, and, and millions of people might believe me. You know? So the, when, when it comes to social media, suddenly the, the who is authority changes. Whoever can track the attention of the public can get that fake or real authority. Okay. And then the last one is work-life balance. I don't like to mix my social media with my work. I think that's a big challenge. But I'm going to share with you something that's also very important is, what about plagiarism and authenticity? How many of you have been plagiarized before? Anyone here that has been, have published something, uh, whether it's teaching content? Or has anybody been plagiarized before yet? Okay, I'll share with you a story. I came here last year, I gave a talk, right? The DNA of a 21st century educator. Okay. That presentation I uploaded using uh, SlideShare. 
three weeks later, I, I published it. I gave the lecture again at my university. I published again, the same, basically the same slide. What happened was, a few months later, I will share with you the story and I will show you how uh, it was plagiarized. And uh, let's just find it. Hopefully the, okay. okay. So when you look at this picture here, okay, this is my presentation, right? Is this me? Huh? It's not me, right? But this is actually happening. This is a seminar in China. It's a school cinema. Cinema. Ah, cinema. <laughs> seminar. Okay. And the irony of this is, you have these uh, teachers. It's more in, the, in high, uh, school education. You have international uh, teachers and local teachers in China getting together, talking about the future. And this happens to be the education president or something, group president uh, of Chinese, Chinese group president of education. And he's actually sharing one of my slides. And the thing is, I have already published it as an OER. That means you can use it, abuse it. The only thing you need to do is attribution, that's all. Okay. But somehow that got lost in translation. <laughs> Okay, and I didn't discover this. This is the irony. I did not discover this. I have a Norwegian friend who was married to a Chinese in China, and he was in—I don't know if he was in China—and he came across one slide from his presentation, which was his also. I mean, which I had used in my slide, and he was amazed. But then, when he looked through the slides, he was like, "Wow, I've seen this presentation before," and he realized it was mine. So he emailed me, and then I looked at this presentation. I said, "Wow, this is so cool! Somebody's using my presentation in China." But then when I looked closely, I said, where am I there? You know, and then I felt, it's not right. Uh, do you feel that's right? Or, uh, so I will share with you. And, and being me, using my uh, research mind, I analyzed the presentation. I will show you the presentation now, how it's breaking down. He has 28 slides, if you look at each slide. Okay, this is the, you can see the talk here. And it was a big thing. This presentation was the big talk. I, I read the Chinese article. I, I don't know Chinese, but I use Google Translate. But, uh, <laughs> So I, my interpretation of the article might be wrong. But this is the presentation uh, done. You can see this is the original one. It has more slides. I like to have a lot of slides. So you cut down, which is very good. Let me just make it smaller. So here we have the first slide. Can you see the first slide here? Uh, very nice. He moved. See, he creatively moved DNA down there. And he took away all this, and he put this on, the e-learning company, general plan. So this is the winner. Okay. And then he copied the second slide. Okay, fine. And then he even translated my Google, my Facebook <laughs> question. He even translated, it was very important for him. Huh? Okay. Then he, this one, I, I just reused. He actually translated, you should get credit for it. He translated this one. <laughs> and this one, okay, he translated fine. This one also he translated. Okay, this one also. And this one. And this one also he translated. See, the funny thing is this one here. There's no explanation to this graphic. There's only a graphic. There's no explanation to it. So I read the article, how he interpreted it, and it was very interesting. I was talking about something else, but he did it critically. So he made, what I understood is that teachers should not be boring. They should create delicious content as well. No. <laughs> but it was not that. I was trying to tell them that teachers should not be farmers in the sense that don't grow everything yourself. Try to use materials and create great materials. But somehow when I, I read the translation, I might be wrong, it was about him drilling, developing delicious food. I mean, teachers should develop delicious content. Cook, cook, cook. And they were very excited about it. And you can see it. And then the logo appears here, everything is And you can see my uh, Creative Commons license is, has disappeared, dropped, okay? And his first original slide is at slide 12. That's his first slide that is not uh, in your master. And that's the, 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 the plan, the master plan for whatever 20 percent and you can see translation, translation, translation. Even Prof. Rosa, I don't know if he's here today. Uh, Prof. Rosa was very happy because he got this uh, technology translated into Chinese. And then he kept on copying and copying and copying and copying. I mean, translating, translating, translating. It's called translated or translation plagiarism. But it's very, I mean, he's done a great job. Even my summary translated very well. He even, to the extent, could not create the Q&A question, uh, question slide. Yeah. Even the Q&A question slide, he, he reused. 
Okay, and then the final step was but okay, fine. So I thought it was was, was amazing situation. So what I did is, I mean, I'm not after. I don't want to sue these people or anything. I mean, I'm shady. Okay, but what I did is, I actually wrote to the biggest newspaper in uh, email, the biggest newspaper in one of the biggest English speaking newspapers in Hong Kong, which is South China Morning Post. And they replied actually within a few hours. They, they told me who it was. They said it was the group president, our Chinese group president of education or something that was giving the presentation. And they have, they have called him, but they can't get hold of him. And they asked me, do you want to uh, sue him? Uh, I said, no, I, I just want an apology. Okay, I never got an apology from him. Uh, but the site has been taken down. Uh, but I have evidence for that. I knew they were going to take down the site. And even now, I can't even find the company anymore. But the point is that, at the end of the day, when we share, what well, my point is that when we share using social media, uh, your content can be protected. And that's what I'm going to get to now. You can actually protect the content. It's just like copyright, okay? But be aware, whether you're using copyright or whatever, people like sometimes to take your content and use it for their own purposes. And you can't run away from that, okay? So the question is, how to protect my in intellectual work, okay? So if you're going to use social media and so on, even normally, how do you protect your commercial or your intellectual work? So how do you do it? How would you do it now? If, if, if I tell you now, you're going to publish, how do you protect your, your, your intellectual work? There's no answer, there's no right answer. Okay. One of them, of course, is copyright, right? You copyright your content, okay? But usually in the social media, they don't use copyright. What do they use? Copy left. <laughs> okay. Actually, there's something called copy left. Okay. But uh, now we, we use the term uh, creative commons. Okay. So I'm going to copy. Okay. We have audio access. I want to show a video. Oh. Is there a? I forgot about that. I want to show some video. I want to show one video so I can introduce to you. Uh, copyright. Uh, copy left.
did you hear or not? You didn't hear? Okay, I'll have to explain. At least you saw the cartoon. I'm sorry about that. But okay. okay, how many of you have heard about Creative Commons before? Uh, is everybody familiar with Creative Commons? Who is not familiar with Creative Commons? Okay, that, that's another half. <laughs> okay, Creative Commons is an alternative license for people that like to publish uh, using openly. So people can use the problem with copyright sometimes is that if you want to use a copyright material, what do you need to do? You need to email them, ask permission, and blah blah. It's so complicated. So they have come up with an alternative uh, right, uh, which is Creative Commons license. Uh, and they have to make it to please everyone, they have actually six different versions of Creative Commons license. For example, if I want to share something, say that I want to share. Uh, I have a, a graphic, right? If I want to share it, but allow people to use it commercially, you can use it commercially, I don't care, I just want to share it. And somebody can create new versions of it, can manipulate, yes. So if you have that alternative, you can just use this license. See? Now say that I, the same thing I want to do, but I don't want people to change the license, so I use share alike, okay? You can see here. I don't expect you to learn these six licenses, I'll show you the alternative I just want to go through. Now say that I want to share with you, but I don't want you to change the content. You know that sometimes, for example, I give you an example. I painted Mona Lisa. Right? I painted this beautiful painting. You can use it, but I don't want you to put somebody else's head there or make fun of it. Now that kind of license is allow you to, you can use it commercially, but you cannot create new versions of it. That means you have here uh, attribution, and no derivatives. You can forget about this. I'll show you how to get this done uh, in the later. And then you have six different licenses. Okay. Most universities. Okay. I just want to show you. Most universities, when it comes to create a common license, they use this license here, which says that I'm sharing my content. I just want attribution, attribution. But you cannot use it commercially. I mean, the whole point I'm sharing with you is not that you're going to take my content and make, uh, become a million of it. So, non-commercial. And then, you can, uh, you cannot change the license. Even if you take this one, you can't change it back to any other license, okay? It's share a okay? This kind of, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I just wanted to share, there is an alternative. If you're planning to publish uh, online some of your resources, you can still be protected by uh, this license. If you use any, uh, like for example, YouTube, if you publish on YouTube, SlideShare, and so on, already when you publish there, there's a drop-down menu to select which license you want, okay? But why I'm sharing with this is, say that you want to start blogging. You want to, tomorrow I want to start blogging, I want to reflect my ideas and, and share sometimes some of my uh, intellectual work. You, you need to put uh, some license on your blog to somehow to show how people can take advantage of your content or make uh, use of your content or reuse your content, okay? So I just want to show you, because if I go through this, it will take about 10 minutes uh, to really understand it. But what they have done is, they have something called here, which is here. They have a tool to help you. So we'll just look at this tool. If you have uh, a computer there, uh, you can go to this, uh, you can write CC license in Google. CC license selection tool, or CC license uh, selection. You can find the link on my blog, on, in the resources. I just want to show you how easy it is to create your own license, and you can put it wherever you want. Okay, so let's go to this here. You can see here. Can you see? No, you cannot see. Let me just see. Sure. Yes?
it's, it's international. I'll get to it now. It's a good, great question. It is international. It's, it's actually the same as corporate. You bring it to court of law, you, it's exactly the same. Uh, okay, I'll just show you that. It's international. I'll show you now. Now, see, if you want to have your own license, uh, what I'm sharing with you first is, is to, to break down the barrier of, of sharing. Okay? Now, if you want to choose your license, there's only two questions you need to ask yourself. Am I going to allow this person to use it commercially? You know, I'm sharing, but if you take it, you can do whatever you want it, but don't sell it. Okay? And the second question is, I say, are you allowed to modify it? You know? And I think, as an academic, if you're sharing uh, textual information, they should be allowed to modify it. That's the whole point. If you're sharing resources, you want to modify the content. Okay? But you can also say, no, you're not allowed to modify it. And this usually happens, graphic designers or photographers, they share pictures, but they don't allow you to modify. So let's say, I say they're not allowed to modify. Should we allow them to use it commercially? What do you think? If you have some uh, intellectual property, would you allow them to use it commercially? If you get a cut? <laughs> that's what you can do with them personally, right? You can get a cut, okay? So no, so you say no here, okay? And then, license jurisdiction, right? You have here, you want it to be international or only Malaysia? You can actually select it. For most people are probably uh, select it. And here is your license, okay? But I want to allow them to modify it. So I can go back here. And this is the license. This one says uh, Creative Commons, Attribution, Non Commercial. And since the other icons are not there, that means that they can actually modify it, okay? And then you can actually go into detail if you're into this metadata and so on. You can put the title of your work, attribute the work to name, attribute the work to URLs. If you have your blog, you can put the URL to the blog. Okay? And you can have a source work uh, URL, so it could be the same also. You can go into the detail, and when you finish filling up all this, you have this script here, which you can put, if you know how to do it, you can actually put it on your blog, whether you want it to have as a footer, header, or on the site. And then you have that. Uh, the thing is, when you do that, when people go to your site, they will know at what moment, uh, and what area are you sharing. Are you allowed to share, reuse, am I allowed to sell it? I'm allowed to uh, modify it. It's only two questions, modify and use it, but they use it commercially. But Creative Commons has become a bit complicated. That's why I don't want to teach you. They actually come up with six licenses and people just get confused. Uh, but the reason they came up with six licenses is because everybody has different interests when they share. Some people want to share, but not use it commercially. Some people don't care, you know, whether they can use it commercially or not. So they came up. But to solve that problem, you can simply go to the, this website and you can choose your uh, what you want, whether to modify or whether to use commercially. Then you get the diagram, and voila! You can after you fill up everything. You can copy paste this, or if you don't know how to do that, you just copy paste this and put in your, for example, your PowerPoint slides. You want to put it inside your PowerPoint slide, or you can put it on your website. You have the script here. If you don't know how to do it, you can always ask the IT people in the in the school or somebody else in IT say to put it on your site. Uh, and then it is already. Uh, protected to a certain extent based on what you have chosen. Yes? Uh, I would say like, you use in a website and talk, uh, but can you like, participate to the Facebook and Facebook? In Facebook? No. Uh, I, I haven't tried. You, I mean, you can put it in Facebook, but then we'll just be kidding if I don't, if, whether you can put it on your Facebook page. But what you can do is, if, if, that, if you have, for example, a Facebook page, your banner, you can just put, what I usually do is I will just put that. Uh, the, yeah, you can put on the banner so they know the level of how they should be using it. But usually people don't do it for uh, Facebook. Yeah. They do it more like uh, if, they're, if they're sharing uh, pictures, images, or they're writing articles and they're posting it uh, in, in their blogs. So that's when they usually use it. And in Facebook, I'm not sure. I have, it's very creative. Yeah. Well, you can put on your header. On, on your, uh, what do you call it? On your uh, uh, banner, banner, you can put on it. So now we're finished with the boring part, huh? Okay, so, for what, that's what I wanted to break down is, we have discussed the boring part, which is the challenges, but these are very real, these challenges are very real, and I wanted to look at them, not tackle them, but look at them before we go into all these tools, because you'll have all these questions, and it's better to deal with them first. So now it's hopefully be more interesting. Okay, so the research side. Now, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say here is that 
You can use social media or Web2 if you want to call it Web2 for the whole aspect of the research side. And that's what the rest of this uh, uh, two, or two hours plus, we're going to go through this with the break. How, from my experience, how we can use it in our research uh, or doing research, whether it's creative research or whether it's academic research and so on. Most people now are doing research on, I can tell you straight, most people are doing research on, I publish a paper in a journal, but I use social media to promote my paper so I can get more views of my abstract and more people downloading my article, and hopefully that will lead to more citations. And this is great. I think this is a good start. One way okay? So I'll show you one example here. You can see here, let me walk around. You have to catch me. Uh, this one here is, is, is a person that published a paper and he managed to get a big blog, free economics blog, to blog about this paper. And you can see the jump when it was post uh, blog about that particular time, the, the jump was huge in terms of downloads and abstract views. Okay? But whether that leads to citations, there's much more issues. I mean, if the paper is no good, no matter how much views you get, it might not cycle. I always say if you want to, I'm not, I don't write many papers in terms of values, non-conventional, uh, conventional ways. But if you really want to get cited, either write a very good paper or write an extremely terrible paper to get published. Because you might get cited for bad research and examples. <laughs> and that's one of the problems with citations. You know now when, when you look at the benchmark, how many citations you have, how many citations? Nobody tells you whether the citation is, are they citing because they're impressed with your work, or they're citing because your work is terrible. And, 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 but they're actually doing research on finding ways to actually, you can get positive citation, negative citation. <laughs> okay. And this is another one example you can see here. It, it exploded. They got so much more views uh, of the abstracts and more downloads by somebody blogging about it. Okay. And here's an example of tweeting. Okay. Somebody big tweets about it, and, and an explosion in terms of downloads of your paper. Okay. Now, this looks really great, but I have to warn you, if you start tomorrow blogging, don't expect suddenly your papers to be looked at and so on. The trick is, not the trick, the way, I mean, if you really want to get uh, people to view your papers using the social media, uh, if you don't have a presence there, is actually to get uh, intellectual people that has a presence to talk about your research. And that's the way that you, you generate a lot of views. Of course, you can talk about yourself, but if you don't, if nobody's reading it, or very few are reading a book, you won't increase your uh, citations, uh, not citations, your abstract views and, and paper downloads. Okay. These are just two examples. Okay. But what about tools? I'm going to go a bit deeper. What tools do you use to discover your domain, your learning domain, or your research domain? Okay, before I go in there, are you using today any tools to data mine the information overload? I mean, you have a, a research domain, right? You're studying something. Say that you're doing, uh, I'm doing uh, what? nuclear psychology. I don't know if that exists. Now. now, how do you, there are thousands of people maybe doing the same topic. How do you gather information? Do you only go to journals? How do you get that information? Do you go to visit websites? How do you gather that information? Are any of you using any tools to, to find this uh, information? Make it come to you, so you don't have to look for it. Okay. When you okay in your domain, how do you find information? Do you go to the different journals and then look for articles, or maybe you go to the databases and confederated research? Maybe you subscribe to different services. Now, all these techniques is very important today when we have information is to find more efficient ways to find all this information related to you. And the good thing is. There are a lot of tools being developed to help you to do that. So although we have this problem with the increasing of information overload, there are more and more tools helping you to zoom in and find what you're looking for. And this is some of the tools, okay? Does any of these tools look familiar to you? Anyone here? Can I just get a hand? Uh, Feedly? Okay, one, we have one Feedly. 